Oh, pardon me. I didn't see you come in. Now, there's been a lot of hype about the Magic X Zoo Mini M. And I'm calling it the Zoo Mini M. It's XU, but in my mind, they named it after me. And obviously, they will continue to do so because I'm such a lovable character. But this sucker came out recently, and everyone and their brother jumped on it. Uh, Stubbs did a video. Ban did a video. And I think the reason people kind of went crazy about it when it first came out are the three P's. It's got price. It's got performance, theoretically. And it's pocketable. Look at that. The lanyard. Now, a longtime friend of the channel, number one Discord user JLash, sent this to me. But I also bought my own. You don't believe me? It's right there. Because they're only about $40. Theoretically, you get a lot for $40. The Zoo Mini M lives in the same micro world as the 28XX. And uh, here's the A300. But this one aims to solve some of the problems we had with its predecessors. And if you want an unboxing, check out Ban's video. If you want a review, check out Stubbs' video. Because today, we're going to install Plum OS on here. Plum OS is basically an Amber Alex shell that goes on top of the stock firmware. Because the stock firmware is not good. Now, what is neat is that Sean, the main guy, maybe, maybe the number two guy at OCP. I mean, at Zoo Mini. Dick Jones runs the cops. You're a cop. I like RoboCop. Anyway, Sean from Magic X, he's been very vocal on the Discord, and he's given us a lot of information. Like, they're not really happy with the lockdown custom firmware this came with, or the fact that it's really hard to bust this open software-wise and develop things for it, or perhaps the fact that maybe the shell wasn't done correctly, so your SD card too sticks out a little bit. All these things he's been very open about, and he's also been open about changes. So with the crystal version of this coming, with kind of a see-through case, they're talking about swapping out the processor altogether, enhancing the shoulder buttons, enhancing the D-pad a little bit, and just overall making it better. And I, for one, applaud these company bigwigs getting on Discord and answering questions and actually taking feedback, because maybe the next time this comes out, it'll be a lot better. But this isn't too bad to begin with, and it definitely can be better if you put a plum on it. Oh, man, I am tired. I don't know if I can finish the video. Oh, wait. I have gamer gummies. These gamer gummies, they say, they're formulated to support your cognitive health and your energy and just generally your performance. And uh, they uh, taste like raspberry. I like that. They have a lot of... Uh, <clears throat> <coughs> oh wow sorry i just uh i want you to unlock your peak male vitality and your potential D -d -d ah! mommy what's wrong with daddy <laughs> oh, i'm strongest man alive D -d 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 -d. i uh <clears throat> i'm really i'm really sorry everyone i just just got back from the doctor, and they said the gummies are fine. There's nothing wrong with the gummies. They're just a regular supplement, and they're just just like a mushroom-based multivitamin. There's nothing wrong with them at all. I just um, I've been, I've been watching a lot of Alex Jones videos on YouTube lately, and I, I guess I got I guess I got carried away. But anyway, back to the handheld. Now to install this, it's really easy. You go to the Plum OS GitHub. The link is in the description, and you download three files. There's going to be one with a 1, a 2, and a 3. Download all three of those. It might take a while. Once you have them on your computer, you're going to want to use 7-Zip. You can probably use WinRAR, but the instructions specified 7-Zip for some reason. So that's what I did, because I have them both installed, because I'm insane. The end result of extracting these files is going to be a folder with your image on it. Now, I will note, it says 0.7. The software I'm about to test is 0.8, because this updates almost every two or three days. This video is coming out a little later than I wanted because I've started it three times because they keep updating and I said to heck with it. I'm just gonna use this footage from 0.7 and just pretend it's 0.8 or heck, by the time this video releases, it might be 0.9. Whatever it is, the process largely remains the same. I use Win32 Disk Imager, you can use Belena Etcher, whatever. You're gonna to wanna to flash the image to a fresh SD card. Now this will support two SD cards, so whatever you have lying around that's small, like an 8 gigabyte or a 16 gigabyte, use that as your main one. 
and then you can have a larger card for your ROMs. The benefit of using two cards is when you have to update it, you don't have to replace all your ROMs if your ROMs are on that second card. You just have to update the first card. So a little bit easier, especially for a software that is updated every two or three days. Once you have that image flashed, you're also going to want to expand the games partition. The instructions are on the screen here in Japanese. I will show you how to do it. There you go. If you are going to use that SD2 card, I don't know how necessary this is, but if you're going to use just one card, you definitely want to do this. You have more room for ROMs. If you're using one SD card, you're going to want to put your ROMs and your BIOS in the appropriate folders. That's really easy. You just find your ROMs, all your legally backed up stuff, right? Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, say no more. And you copy them over to the corresponding folders. Same with your BIOS files. If you're going to use an SD2 card, you do these same steps, except they come later in the process. You're going to want to start your Zoom in EM with that SD card one in there. It's going to create the folders when it detects there's a card in the SD2 slot. So once you boot it once with the SD2 card in, you can pop that card out and put all your ROMs and your BIOS on that card. All right, so let's power her on. If all goes well, you'll see a Plum OS screen. Okay. It's going to take a minute. And you will see no games, just some ports and Pico 8. That's fine. Hit start, go to TF card management, and select TF1 plus TF2. Are you willing to use the TF1 management system and use TF2 as the management ROM? Yes. What it's doing now is it's making all your folders on your second card. At this point, you want to power it down by hitting start and quit, shut down, add all your ROMs to the second card. Easy peasy. Got the SD card configured, plugged it back in, and now we're going to let this, uh, let this percolate. Of course, now you can see we have tons and tons of systems available. The main benefit of Plum OS right now, for me at least, is that it gives you access to all your normal emulation station stuff. Look at all these cool emulation station settings. And you get access to RetroArch for all the systems not using standalone emulators. Some of these are using standalone emulators. We'll get into that in a minute. One of the cool things about emulation station is it gives you access to uh, all sorts of performance tweaks. Like you can choose to overclock. And the easiest way to do this without really getting into the nitty gritty of what frequency you want to run the chip at is to Go to advanced system options and make sure you enable max performance. This is going to throw a ton of power at whatever emulator you're running at the cost of some, uh, some battery life. Emulation station also gives you different cores and different options. Like for N64, you can run two Moopin 64 cores, a retro run core, and two retro arc cores. How about that? You also have the option for themes and retro achievements if you have a dongle. And all of these are pretty neat little advancements, especially when you consider the stock operating system on this thing. When you hit the menu button in stock OS, for the cores that supported it at least, you got a bare bones menu where you could save, load, or leave. RetroArch expands upon that a lot. RetroArch gives you all sorts of granular options. You can manage your save states a lot easier. You can uh, rewind. You can fast forward. You can set your hotkeys. You can change your shaders. All sorts of stuff that you didn't have access to in stock. As far as games go, everything up until PlayStation 1 is going to play fine. And you're going to have a little bit of overhead for any kind of shaders or rewinding or fast forward. Anything you want to do that way. PS1 itself is fine, and the sticks are mapped for you right out of the box, which I like. But beyond PS1 is really a mixed bag. Dreamcast is weirdly good. N64 is a mixed bag. And then PSP is just, I don't know what's going on with PSP. It's, it's, it's not good. The home button of the standalone emulators work a lot more in Plum OS, like for Drastic here. But Dreamcast or N64 just closes the emulator, which is kind of a bummer. I would like to have the ability to save state in Dreamcast and N64, something they're probably working on with their daily updates at this point. Hitting it for DS, obviously, brings up the Drastic menu, which lets you set a fast-forward hotkey and other hotkeys, lets you turn on FPS, lets you do save states, all sorts of that stuff. DS on here? is really, really good for these Game Boy Advance 2.0 games. I have a list I can put in the description. Basically, Game Boy Advance 2.0 games are DS games that just use one screen for the most part, and you don't need a stylus, you don't need a microphone. You can uh, set up Drastic where 
This button is the stylus. You can do a hotkey for the microphone. You can switch between your views, all that sort of stuff. But you're still not gonna have a great time because this is a pretty small screen. And if you're trying to switch back and forth between those screens, mm, it's not gonna be great. Final Fantasy Tactics Advance A2 right here looks amazing, even on the small screen. And it is nice to have these Game Boy Advance 2.0 games available in such a small mini form factor. For PSP, the G button gets you into the full PPSSP menu. Say that three times fast. PPSSP, 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 Sorry, I'm still coming down from those gamer gummies. But getting into the menu is good. What's not good is that PSP on here in general is a massive crapshoot. Some of your lower end RPGs and other low intensity games might run okay, but anything requiring real horsepower just kind of craps out. I'll show you here with some uh, Grand Theft Auto. Whee! Try to avoid copyright strikes. Oh god. Now that low FPS doesn't just uh, look bad. It makes the game hard to control, as evidenced by my sweet motorcycle riding there. Hey, I got over the fence. Oh boy. Let's just steal someone's car. Excuse me, miss? There we go. By giving you access to the full PPSSP configuration settings, you can tweak a little bit, and you might be able to squeeze out some unexpected juice for uh, your favorite game, but chances are it's probably just going to be a slideshow, like Grand Theft Auto here is, which is kind of a bummer, but there's hopefully room to grow. Also a bummer is N64, especially since you got these dual analog sticks, which you think would be ideally suited for a system like the N64. What's Mario doing? Some N64 games will run fine, but you do run into occasional rendering issues, which is kind of disappointing. You can switch cores to help the look, but then a lot of times they run worse, which, again, kind of a bummer. See G here, instead of bringing up a menu, just abruptly shuts you down. For N64, a lot of your hard-to-run stuff, like Cruising USA, just it just doesn't run well at all it's you're better off just not playing it like if you wanted to play cruising usa on here it runs so bad you'll never get out of san francisco you'd be better off calling for a taxi it's crazy taxi too. dreamcast on here runs really really good right out of the box and i'm not whoa not sure how or why but it does everything's snappy and it's actually kind of fun to play pick up another fare here I really hope this kind of means that we have uh, more room for growth with N64 and PSP. I wouldn't hold my breath. Whoa! Jeez. Sorry, everyone. I wouldn't hold my breath, but uh, you never know. And of course, the menu button closes the emulator for you. Weirdly, consistently inconsistent behavior on some of the cores. Well, Gary, it's time for What Did We Learn? And we learned that in addition to being a delightful addition to a fruit salad, plums are also great on the Zoo Mini M. Plum OS is fairly easy to install, could be a lot easier to update though, and it adds a lot of functionality to a mini handheld that a lot of people have gone gaga for. As Plum OS improves, the Zoo Mini M could become the best of these 2.8 inch screen micro mini handhelds, whatever you want to call them, and the developer has been on a tear lately. There's been nine variations in this custom firmware just in the last two weeks. So hopefully we continue to see more improvement. Hopefully next time I try to do a little guide slash review on a custom firmware, they don't keep updating it every single day. But it's good for you, bad for Zoo. We've also seen some promising statements from Sean. He's a Magic X rep sales guy i don't know if he runs a company but he's he's involved with magic x and he's on our discord he seems committed to improvements on overall build quality new chips new guts uh better access to the software for custom firmware developers basically everything you'd want to hear he doesn't like the fact that you know the shell doesn't really fit and the sd card sticks out sometimes he doesn't like the fact that the buttons on some of them are great and some of them aren't he doesn't like the fact that this chip is uh, locked down a lot more than they thought it would be. That sort of stuff. We'll see. We'll see. Words are good, but words without actions behind them aren't worth a lot. Hopefully you liked my words and actions. If you did, savagely attack the like and subscribe buttons. And stay tuned for all sorts of new reviews and videos on all the new handhelds that will be sure to come out between now and Christmas. You know, the grind never stops. 
Also, thanks for Gamer Gummies for sending me a bottle, and I'm sorry for making it seem like they turned me insane. I can assure you I was already like that before I tried them. If you're interested in these uh, mushroom-based supplements, check them out in the link in our description if you're interested. There's a coupon code in there, too, if you are really interested. But, uh, you know, don't take medical advice from me. God knows I'm not a doctor. All right, chuckleheads. Uh, I hope, hope you like the video, and I'll see you later. Goodbye.